What is up everyone, Movie Man back again with another end of the month vlog. This is just me talking about all the movies and TV shows that I have watched in the month of January 2022. I've got 20 titles to talk about here. Some of them are on 4K, Blu-ray, some of them are at the cinema and some of them were streaming. Basically, just everything I've watched. Now before I get into it, I just want to mention two TV shows that I've been watching, but I haven't finished them yet. But they will probably be finished in February, so we'll go into more detail about them in February. But the first one is Yellow Jackets, which was recommended to me by Sean from Lost in the Real. I'll leave his link down below. And Sean put it really high in his top TV shows of 2021. And Sean, you were right to do that. I'm really enjoying this show. I don't want to go too much into it, but if you're looking for something slightly different to watch, with lots of drama and tension, definitely give Yellow Jackets a go. And the other one, I'm going to butcher this name now, <laughs> and you may know what I'm about to say here, but I'm going to have a guess at it. The woman across the street from the... Yeah, I've got that wrong. I'm just going to have to read it out here. <laughs> I do have the iPad in front of me because it has the list of everything I've been watching. The woman in the house across the street from the girl in the window. So, yeah, <laughs> bit of a mouthful there, but I've... Two episodes into that, and it's only a short series. They're only like 30 minutes long, so I'll definitely have this finished in February, but really enjoying it. You know, some of the reviews i seen, I didn't go into it thinking that it was going to be that great, but I'm really enjoying it, even though it is only two episodes in. But more on that next month when I finish them two series. Um, so let's just get into it with the first thing I watched. Now, if you watched last month's end of month vlog, you will know that I started the Harry Potter franchise. I got the box set on 4K. And I watched Philosopher's Stone and Chamber of Secrets and really enjoyed them. So we did carry it on with The Prisoner of Azkaban. Now, I know this is a lot of people's favourite Harry Potter movie, but for me, it isn't. I I enjoyed it, you know. I enjoyed the whole of this franchise, by the way. I enjoyed it, but I don't think it is the best. I actually prefer Philosopher's Stone and Chamber of Secrets to it, I'm not going to lie. I didn't like the opening on the bus and I didn't like the whole time travel thing. It just wasn't working for me, but I did like the whole Sirius Black story. I thought that was great. And I liked the way it started going to more dark territory here with the Dementors and stuff. And when Harry sees one of the, I think it's a Dementor on the train or the Death Eater. Can't quite remember now. Uh, that was a great moment as well. So Prisoner of Azkaban, it, it's a decent entry into this franchise. And next up we have... Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. A bit of Harry Potter spam here. Um, the Goblet of Fire was actually one of my favourites. I think it might be my second favourite in the whole franchise. I think Philosopher's Stone might be my favourite though. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I know that's not a lot of people's, but I thought it was great. But Goblet of Fire... Um, yeah, I, I love the whole Triwizard Tournament. It gives something a little bit different to just having Quidditch there. Uh, there's so many good moments with the mermaid, well, with the app to rescue their friends from under the water. I thought that was great. Um, and pretty dark, you know, the ending there, didn't actually see that one coming. So I thought the Goblet of Fire was a, an excellent addition into this franchise. Like I said, probably my second favourite in my top three Harry Potter movies anyway. I was going to do a ranking on these, but I just, I just haven't got around to it. Maybe I'll do it nearer the time of... Um, Fantastic Beasts film coming out because I still need to watch them too as well and I'll go into more detail about each movie I've got it all written down you know everything I liked I didn't like about them uh, in my notes so Goblet of Fire yeah definitely one of the best Harry Potter movies I feel next up we have Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix <laughs> uh, yeah Umbridge was a good character she was someone you really love to hate um but I thought this one felt a little bit emptier than the rest of the franchise. The school even felt empty at times. And I think I might be getting mixed up with Half-Blood Prince there. I can't quite remember. Uh, but I think Harry doing that whole, you know, training the wizards up and the witches in his own little dojo there, if you like. That was interesting enough. Um, and you do really get on the side of everyone in the school because this Umbridge character is just pissing everyone off and you every you wanted to get out the school basically i don't think it had the best final third act but it's a, it's, it's still a decent film 
So back to Harry Potter in just a bit. <laughs> I'll just put that one there, by the way. Next up, we have Goosebumps 2. I bought this for really cheap after really enjoying the first film. This one definitely felt like more of a cash grab. Uh, it didn't have the heart of the original, really. And it just sort of repeated what the first one, but to less avail. Um, Jack Black turned up for this for, I think his screen time was less than five minutes. It just They just got him in there and gave him a little payday. Um, what I will say is the whole of Halloween, the theme of Halloween, the holiday, is definitely implemented here. You can definitely tell it's Halloween in this little town, but definitely not as good as the first one. It's watchable. Nothing more, nothing less. Definitely a cash grab because the first one done well at the cinemas. They just put this together and went, yeah, throw that out there. So, yeah. I did like the Goosebumps books back in the day. I used to really read all of them in school and stuff. Next up is Cobra Kai Season 3. Now, last month, you will remember that I started Cobra Kai. If you watched last month's one, and I watched Season 1 and 2. And I got round to Season 3. Absolutely loved it. It's one of my favourite shows of all time. Now, I will leave a link down below where I've reviewed the whole series and ranked e each series from worst to best at the end of that video. All in one big video there. Um, so that'll be down below if you want to check that out. But Season 3... There's so many good moments in this. I love um, where Johnny and Danny LaRusso are kind of out there looking looking for um, Johnny's son. What's his damn name? Robbie. And Johnny jumps in Danny's car, this like big Aldi, and he says, don't you dare scratch this car. And then you just see him skidding around the corner and stuff. <laughs> uh, it, it was an interesting, interesting series. It did drag a little bit in the middle where Danny... Danny Luso goes to Japan and stuff. I thought that did slow it down a little bit, but overall, another great entry for Cobra Kai. I, even in my ranking video, I do say that I don't really have a preference. It's very, very minor margins in that ranking video. So if you want to see more details on season three, check it out down below. Next up, we have. You know what I'm getting, don't you? Yeah, you do. Harry Potter and the Half Blood Prince. Um, yeah, another good entry, um, a very, very hard hit and end, and I will say that, I didn't expect that, I only read up to book four as a kid, so I didn't really know what was coming in the next four films, um, but it was kind of weird, everyone was just sort of trying to get into relationships in this one, and Hermione, you find out about her feelings with Ron and stuff like that, <laughs> Yeah, it's not one of my favourite Harry Potter movies, but it's a, it's a good entry. Like I said, I like the whole franchise. On my letterbox, I think the lowest I give one of these movies was three and a half stars. So, yeah, it, it, it's not bad. It's not bad. Next up is The Evil Dead. And this is actually going to be my older pick of the month. It took me so long to get around to this movie because I wasn't... I'm not a massive fan of The Evil Dead. I do like it, but I've never just had any desire to go and see this. And I know Paul Tams, who I'll leave his link down below to his channel, absolutely loves this movie. It's his favourite horror remake. And Paul, I can see why, my friend. This is great fun. Uh, so gory and bloody. There's actually a scene where blood rains out the sky. <laughs> um, but yeah, there was people's arms hanging off by a little tendon and stuff. Just... Absolutely epic. Everything you want in a horror movie, it's so fast-paced. And I actually think I prefer this over the original, I'm not going to lie. I think this is a fantastic remake. Um, they've just done everything right, everything. It's so well shot as well. So many great-looking scenes and visuals. I, I definitely can't wait to re revisit this. When The Evil Dead Rise comes out, I'm thinking about maybe doing the whole franchise and reviewing them all. Um, and then ranking them. And I've got a feeling this one might come first, unless The Evil Dead Rise is just absolutely epic. But what a great horror remake. One of the best horror remakes I've ever seen. I can't recommend this enough. It's just great fun. It really is. It's such a brilliant horror movie. So, Paul, thumbs up, my friend, for that one. My older pick of the month. Uh, just looking what's next there, guys. Right, now we have my um, new release of the month, and this is Cobra Kai Season 4, which technically came out on the 31st of December. I do apologise, but I finished it in January. One of my favourite seasons of Cobra Kai, even though it is only five margins, I just, this just had so much going for it. 
loved the ending on this big cliffhanger, which just made me really want season five. I just want it so much. Teddy Silver was such a brilliant character to introduce into this franchise. Everything he'd done worked, you know, and this is where I realised how well written this show is. Everything just coming together to form the ending of this show. Just things that happen at the start of the series that you don't really pick up on and move to one side all comes back and weaves itself in. It was a, It's a genius, genius programme. From something that started with such a simple concept as now going into a brilliantly written program. I cannot re recommend this show enough, everyone. It is absolutely incredible. I didn't fancy it at all myself. I'm not a massive fan of The Cratic Kid. I just think it's a good movie. But oh my God, this show is amazing. Trust me, you've got to watch it. It is fantastic. Believe the hype <laughs> if you haven't seen it already. Next up is Scream. Uh, or Scream 5 if you like. Now I'll leave a full review for this down below if you want to check this out as well. But a good entry into the Scream franchise. I, you know, I didn't guess the killer. I know a lot of people said they did, but I didn't see it coming. Um, I really liked the new characters, especially Melissa Barrera, I think her name is, from In the Heights. thought she was a good central lead protagonist and it was a good idea to let the legacy characters sort of take a step back there, I feel. Good slasher movie. I have a lot of fun with the Scream movies. This was one of my most anticipated of the year and it didn't disappoint. I had some problems with it involving a returning character which I sort of get to, into in my review. I'm not going to spoil it here. Um, I just think that was a bit out of place. But overall, a very, very good screen film. And this may have got my new release of the month if it wasn't for Cobra Kai. So, yeah, Scream 5. Please give us more slasher movies. This is what we want. This is what everyone's going to see. Well, I do anyway. So thank you so much uh, for putting Scream 5 out there. Let's get a Scream 6. I'll definitely go and see it. Okay, back to this box set, my friends. Sorry if you're not a Harry Potter fan. And that is Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1. Um, Yeah, a lot more Voldemort in this movie and stuff and his little clan that are going on there. I do feel like this could have been one big, long, epic film. This and that Deathly Hallows Part 2. It felt like The Hunger Games, Mockingjay and Mockingjay Part 2. But in a better way. I wouldn't say it's the clutching at straws that much with it. Um, but Harry and Ron and Hermione sort of in the forest there was a strange little dynamic not being in Hogwarts, you know, because um, they've been in Hogwarts virtually every year. But I thought it was a good movie. I, th I thought it was one of the, somewhere in the middle ground. Like if, he, if I'm going to rank Harry Potter, the Deathly Hallows Part 1 would probably be in like fourth or fifth place, I think. I thought it was, you know, it weren't quite, you know, like that Mock and Jay Part 1 movie where they're just, trying to squeeze every bit of money out of you. But even though they did do that, it's done in a better way. So definitely Hallows Part 1. It wasn't bad. And I'll come back to that one in a minute. <laughs> Next up, we have a Jean-Claude Van Damme movie. Now, back in the day, I was Arnold Schwarzenegger and Sylvester Sloan. They were my heroes. I didn't get to see too many Jean-Claude Van Damme films. I have seen AWOL... Sorry, no, I haven't seen AWOL Bloodsport and Kickboxer Street Fighter. They're the three I remember seeing. So I picked it. Oh, I've just dropped the Blu-ray. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, I've I picked up Hard Target. Um, I've heard this was one of his best, and you know what? I really enjoyed this. It's not a masterpiece or anything. It's not like a five out of five movie or anything like that. But it's just a fun time. Uh, this girl is looking for her father's killer because it's kind of like Hostel, where people pay people to kill someone and they let them on the run and this person who's paid the money has to hunt them down and kill them and this sort of happened to her father and she's on the lookout for him looking for her killer and she gets into a bit of trouble and she hires Jean-Claude Van Damme to protect her and I didn't know how good this guy could kick he's just kicking everyone doing his flying kicks and big roundhouse kicks and stuff it's got me intrigued to watch more Van Damme movies, I'm not going to lie. I'm looking, I'm picking a few more up now. I had a fun time with this. My fiance actually loved it as well. I didn't think this would be a type of movie, but she had a really good time with this. We both really enjoyed it. So, Hard Target, one of my better watches of the month there, I feel. Next up, we have a brand new 2022 
release from Netflix, which is one of definitely the strangest movie I watched all month, and that is called The House. This is a stop motion foreign film. I can't remember where it was from. Was it Norway? I can't quite remember. And it tells three different stories. It's an anthology, and they are so weird. It's kind of like dark fantasy tales. Like the first one, this family are forced to move into this other house because this landowner wants to buy their house. And it sort of goes in a really weird direction. The second one was about this rat <laughs> whose house starts to get overcrowded by these other rats. And the third one was about this cat who couldn't get rid of this guy who sort of moves in. I don't know if it was all in the same house in different periods. I think it was actually. It was good, but definitely not something I really would say I enjoyed. But it was intriguing enough as you're watching it. If you like stop motion and stuff and want something a little bit different, it's probably worth checking out. But I wouldn't say it's def it's for everyone. You know, it's definitely a, a strange, strange film. So that is The House. Next up, we have a 4K here, Dumbo. Now, I've wanted to see this for such a long time. I, I, I like the Dumbo, the animated cartoon. And I planned to go to the cinema in 2019 to see this. And I just didn't. And I've never got around to it. And this was going for really cheap on Amazon in my one of my last Blu-ray 4K pickups. I explained I got it for like seven pounds or something. I mean, my fiance watched it the other day, and I thought it had a really strange look to it. It's Tim Burton. What you watch it? Can you say? But I wouldn't say it was out all out entertaining. There is some very pay, you know, there's some pace issues with it. Uh, it does drag in places, but it's still a good film. I enjoyed it. I thought Danny DeVito was really great in this. Uh, Michael Keaton as the bad guy is always interesting, isn't he? Um, and the CGI and stuff wasn't bad either. I, it's a very average film. That's all I can say. I definitely prefer the animated uh, version. I'm not going to lie. But it, it's, it's, it's fine. It's fine. Next up, we had a movie that I didn't hold too much hope for. But then when I think about it, why? Because I love found footage films, I always have fun with them, and that is Unfriended. I picked this up for really cheap last month, and I thought, you know what, I'll just give it a go. I, my fiance said it was good, she watched it with her sister ages ago, and this is all takes place on a laptop in a Zoom call, kind of like that movie Host. I do actually think this one was done a little bit better, um, a little bit more clever, because they're using all these apps on the computer and stuff to communicate, like Facebook Messenger and stuff. And it's basically about this girl who is bullied and she kills herself and comes back to haunt the five people who sort of terrorised her in school. Um, I love the way it all unravels itself as well. You learn more about these characters as it goes on. And it's quite creepy in places. I recommend this if you like found footage. I'm definitely going to be looking to watch the second one. You can't get it on Blu-ray here in the UK, but when it comes on stream and all something, I'll definitely watch the second one. I had a lot of fun with this. I did. I know a lot of people may not love that type of film, but I had fun with it. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Next up is a 101 Films release called Hell Night. I always used to see this in a video shop, and it really got me intrigued, especially with Linda Blair in, because I was always fantasized about the exorcist like i was always thinking what's that movie like i know Lin it stars linda Bear blair and i need to watch it but it was banned in the uk back then and i knew she was in this so i was thinking is this like another you know terrifying horror movie because linda blair's in it you know when you think like that as a kid but it you know as i get older i realized that it wasn't uh, and i've seen the exorcist now of course and stuff but this, I, I really didn't like this movie. I didn't. Uh, by the way, this has got a nice little slip cover there. Nice co different cover on it there, which I really like. Um, yeah, I, I just didn't enjoy it. I thought it was so badly made, really cheesy character decisions that didn't make sense and just were so annoying. I mean, Linda Blair was good in this, but... It was just a very... Uh, they have to stay the night in this house uh, because that's what happens when you're new at the school. You have to stay overnight at this haunted house. But I just didn't enjoy it. It was a hard one to get through, I'm not going to lie. I usually like low-budget horror movies and you know cheaply made ones from the 80s and stuff because I can just see them for what they are and have fun with this one. It really didn't do it for me, I'm not going to lie. I know a lot of people do like that movie as well. 
Last time we go back to this box set, I promise, and that is Harry, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hollows Part 2. Now, this was definitely one of the best Harry Potter films for me. Definitely top three or four. Um, I thought it ended great. Definitely the darkest one in the series. Um, but it's just good to see all these characters and where they go in life after Hogwarts and stuff. Um, Harry and his friends trying to get the last... Hend oh, I forgot what they were called. Like, oh, I forgot what they're called. Heart Hendrixes or something. You can <laughs> you can correct me in the comments. But Voldemort's parts of his soul, really. Um, yeah, a, a great finale to a really good franchise. I don't love this franchise as much as most people, but it is good. I can see why people love it, um, especially if you're a fan of the books and stuff. Um, but Daniel Radcliffe, I thought he was really great as Harry. You know, I thought he put a a lot of great performances in there. Um, Hermione was probably my favourite character overall. I thought she was great. But Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2. A great way to end a really good series. I'm glad I finally watched them now. I thought I was the only person in the world who hadn't seen them. So Next up we have a 4K called Overlord. I've heard so many great things about this movie. And the last 40 minutes were actually really enjoyable. But everything leading up to that was really slow. It was a really tough build-up, I'm not going to lie. Um, Wyatt Russell's in this. thought he was great in the movie, to be honest. He's one of the best characters. And it's basically about wartime. And they have to go and rescue someone, I think, um, from this base. Was it that? Or someone from a village or something? I can't quite remember now. Um, but the Nazis have sort of made this serum that makes you superhuman and it's sort, into sort of into a creature because you're that superhuman. Like you, Everything's bulging out your skin and stuff. Like I said, second half of the movie is dead. Well, I wouldn't even say second half. I'd say third act was really, really great. Everything else was really slow. Apart from the first five minutes, which is a good opening, to be honest. But I, I didn't love this movie as much as a lot of people. I thought it was... I give it three out of five on Letterboxd, so... There you go. Look good on 4K though, I'll give it that. Next up we have The Aristocrats. Now I've started doing my movie news weekly again and a live action version of The Ar Aristocrats got announced and I talked about it in one of their videos and then I just seen it on Disney Plus and thought, you know what, I've never seen this. My sister used to love it so I'll give it a go. I, I enjoyed it. It's not one of the best Disney movies. It's like a 7 out of 10 film. Uh, I really liked the dogs in this actually. I thought they were really funny characters and the butler. It was just crazy, <laughs> you know, trying to get all the money for himself and stuff. It's a nice little adventure movie for kids. The animation is a little bit dated. But the Alex Kratz, it was, it was a good Disney film. Uh, nothing more, nothing less. Next up, we have a 2022 Netflix release called Home Team. And this got a few bad reviews on Letterboxd, and it is very generic. But I... I forgot the guy's name who's in this. It's Adam Sandler's friend. Is it Kevin? Kevin James? Kevin James, is it? I can't. I, I don't know if I'm getting mis mixed up with him now. Or the oh, that's Kevin Smith from Jay and Silent Bob. So, yeah, I think it is Kevin James. <laughs> I was getting mixed up with the Silent Bob there, who's Kevin Smith. But, yeah, Kevin James. And he is sort of suspended from his American football team. And he comes and coaches his kids' team. Who, had, who just suck, they can't even score a touchdown, never mind win a game, and he comes and sort of changes the team up, really. Uh, like I said, very generic, but it was really funny in places for me. I thought Kevin Smith, uh, Kevin James, was playing this other character, but my girlfriend come down, well, fiancé come down and said it's, it's actually his cousin who looks like him, or his brother or something, which blew me away. I didn't know he had, he had a relative who looks so well like him. Um, and he was a great character. He was just like this weird assistant coach. <laughs> there were some funny moments in this. I real, I, I enjoyed it. It was like a three out of five on Letterboxd for me, but I enjoyed it. I, I, just an easy, easy sports movie to watch, really. And last up, we have The Ledge, another 2022 release, which I watched just last night. And this is about a girl, two girls who are out in a cabin. And these guys come in the next cabin and one of them is just a little bit loopy and he sort of forces himself on her and she sort of pushes him away and he throws her off this cliff and her friend records the whole thing. So they chase her up this cliff 
and she's like a brilliant well up a mountain and she is this brilliant climber you know because you see flashbacks of her practicing and stuff and the start of this film really did open up well but it just become very very stale with this girl just stuck on the cliff and these guys not knowing how to get her down or get the camera off her and the villain in this movie was just an asshole and he couldn't really act i thought he was a bad actor and he keeps shouting to this girl i'm gonna get you kelly no more time left kelly you're gonna be freezing up there kelly I'm coming for you, Kelly. That's all he said, and I will never, ever want to hear the name Kelly again. Sorry if there's anyone called Kelly watching, but this guy just irritated the shit out of me. Um, but there was a great kill in this, so at the end, I'm not going to lie, I thought that was a fantastic moment. Overall, a 5 out of 10 film. Nothing special. Um, it won't be high on my 2022 rank, and that's for sure. So that is The Ledge. So thank you so much, everyone. I hope you all enjoyed this in the month vlog i usually try to watch so many different things it's not usually one big franchise like harry potter there i know that took up a lot of the space sorry if you're not a harry potter fan but what do you think of these movies guys is what was your favorite watch of the month and don't forget if you want to see more of these in the month vlogs or my scream review my cobra kai video they'll all be down below as well take it all easy guys i'll see you all in the next video